Greetings. Uh, my name is James P. Madonna of Mega Life 21. Progressive Discussions. Um, Mega Mega Life 21 Live. And Mega Life 21 um, Hard Hitting Podcasts. Um, this show, in particular, is about the exotic pet industry. Okay, I have first-hand experience for many years in the exotic pet industry, so has my brother-in-law, uh, Jerry, and um, based on our personal experience, I would like to expose uh, the industry, expose the, uh, the many uh, uh, cons, the pitfalls, the flaws of the industry. Um, it is a form of retail. Retail in the United States is very underhanded and sleazy, uh, in my opinion. They lie profusely. Uh, they take a little bit of truth. They embellish. They blow it out of proportion. They give you all the pros to why you should purchase a certain item, but they withhold the cons. They do not tell you everything. Uh, I can go on and on about all dishonest forms of American retail and capitalism like fine jewelry, infomercials, uh, products from infomercials, that are inferior in quality, that do not work uh, based on false advertisement. But right now, uh, this show is going to be about the exotic pet industry, which includes arachnids, insects of different sorts, um, lizards, you know, reptiles, which they call herps, herpetology. Um, and and such. Um, of course, there are many YouTube videos that discuss the proper care of such exotic reptiles. Uh, some of them are qualified professionals. Many of them are not. Uh, the people that you find on forums are basically uh, punks, uh, amateurs, ham and eggers that do not know their ass from their elbow. They just like to stick their two cents in, just like they do on social media, on Facebook, uh, giving their opinion, uh, giving you the impression that they know what they're talking about when they really don't. I have been misinformed by such punks on forums many times and I have had my exotic pets perish on me because of the misinformation by these uh, these uh, young people that pretend like they're experts they pretend they know it all they pretend they have the answer when they don't okay and um, I've, through trial and error, uh, mostly coming from the misinformation available on the internet and lying retail uh, pet shop owners, managers, uh, who try to sell you to Brooklyn Bridge pretty much when you walk in there. Uh, they try to sell you items that you do not need for the pet okay just to make a sale uh, overpriced obviously um, items that are just not necessary that often uh, breeders don't even use but aesthetically it looks nice it looks pretty and it comes at a high price tag and uh, they, they'll just load up your shopping cart with 
things that you don't need uh, and it ends up costing much more than the exotic pet itself whether it be a reptile arachnid or whatever and uh, this is all part of uh, the underhandedness of sleazy American retail in our capitalist system and uh, that's just how it is I mean it, it includes car dealers infomercials and such but we're gonna stick to exotic pets now the photograph that you see right now in this podcast is a photograph of a baby uh, Cuban red scorpion that was purchased by my uh, brother-in-law actually he he purchased six of them from uh, a company called Swift Invertebrates Kelly Swift is the owner and um, in my opinion these baby scorpions should not have been sold to the public they're too young they're way too small and too vulnerable okay uh, uh, hatchlings of any kind newborns of any animal any exotic pet even lizards should not be sold to the public because of their vulnerability they should be kept and uh, of course they should be eating putting on some size and then when they're proven established healthy animals that have enough size that uh, would prevent a high mortality rate then they should be sold they should be they should be not sold as nymphs or tiny uh, uh, tarantula slings that are newborn and in this case newborn um, baby scorpions that most likely have a high mortality rate and sure enough at $35 a pop um, my brother-in-law lost I would say four of them four died on him prematurely and they were in ideal conditions receiving appropriate size pinhead live food and they still died and I believe I believe he has two left that are alive that made it and uh, $35 a pop that adds up to a lot of money especially since many of these online companies uh, force the uh, overnight $40 shipping fee which for an arachnid is not necessary uh, uh, a two-day priority United States Postal Service shipment is sufficient for an arachnid uh, if, if you have to add a heat pack when the weather's chilly or a, a cold pack during uh, a warm spell a heat wave then you do that but uh, to force the $40 overnight shipping it's ridiculous to pay $40 uh, which far surpasses the cost of the animal when the shipping far surpasses the cost of the animal it doesn't make sense uh, a lot of these companies use FedEx only and FedEx is pricey um, DHL is one of the most reasonable but I would say the best would be United States Postal Service two-day priority shipping is only like six dollars and forty something cents okay but these crooks jack up even that price because they have to make a profit on every fucking thing even the shipping they have to make a profit on so they jack up the price of the shipping 
So they're they're making a profit off of the animal and the shipping. But that's a whole other scam, you know, shipping and handling. What the hell is handling? You know what I mean? Of course they have to handle it. But they got to charge you for every damn thing, like like the medical profession. Okay, so they're ripping you off by jacking up the price of the shipping beyond what it really is. Uh, the, the creature is way overpriced. But my biggest complaint is uh, online companies that sell animals that are way too young to the public because of the high mortality rate. Now, uh, that being said, I had a personal problem with a company called Reptile City, which is in Texas. Uh, this happened years ago. I purchased uh, an Australian blue tongue skink, a young juvenile, not a baby though. I had no idea that this blue tongue skink was wild caught because it was not specified by the company. Okay, it, it should really be captive bred. Always go with captive bred. Anyway, it, it wasn't specified what it was. It ended up being wild caught. It was infested with internal parasites. The animal refused to eat. I was hit with very high veterinary bills. Okay, because the animal ended up being sick. Long story short, it died. So, and the I emailed uh, Reptile City, and my answer was. Uh, really? That's the only thing the owner said to me was, really? With a question mark. He did not apologize. He did not give me store credit. He did not give me any restitution for selling me a sick wild caught, a blue tongue skink. Okay. Similar rotten attitudes and contempt for the customer is shown also by companies like Backwater Reptiles, uh, Ken the Bug Guy. I swear, when you see this 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 dude, this this dork in his videos, you, he's got douchebag written all over his face. Ken the Bug Guy sold my brother-in-law for for me a a young uh, uh, it, it, it was a young let me see um, uh, vinegroom it would it, which they call it a, a whip scorpion it has has no stinger okay a vinegroom all right it shoots like acetic acid uh, at when it's uh, threatened. Anyway, it, it was a nymph. He, did, he didn't specify the size of the nymph. It was the size of an ant, for God's sakes. The thing didn't eat. It was so friggin' tiny for the cost that he was charging, and plus the shipping. Size of an ant, it died. Ken the bug guy insisted that oh it, it was it was eating a lot when I had it it was it was it was it was packing away the the, the insects it was it was healthy it was this it was that how could how could his description of a friggin nymph that small the size of an ant be a healthy uh, arachnid that was eating profusely, like he put it. Okay. Uh, according to him, he's another one. The customer's always wrong. He's always right. You don't sell anything that is a, a newborn. The thing was the size of an ant. It was a newborn. I highly doubt if it was packing away the food like Ken the bug guy said, okay, you just don't sell anything that tiny. Only an expert can raise 
a nymph that small. Okay, only an expert would be willing to deal with fruit flies and pinheads as feeders. And that's another racket. Selling fruit flies. Uh, these retail scumbags want between like $18 and uh, up to $20 for a jar of stinking fruit flies. You can put a mushy banana in a, in a, in a container outside your house and, and attract your own fruit flies. But they actually get that much money for, for, for fruit flies that have a short lifespan. Absolutely incredible ripoff. Um, the best all round feeder has to be the Red Runner Turkestan uh, roaches. Keep them warm and they will reproduce. You will have pinheads. You, they grow fast. They get the adults are much larger than the jumbo crickets uh, without any of the drawbacks of crickets. Okay, of course, dubia roaches are outstanding. Okay, uh, um, they don't climb, they don't jump, they don't stink, they don't die off on you. Um, they have a relatively uh, long lifespan, they breed fast. It goes, the same thing goes for the Turkish dance, but don't, crickets are absolute waste and a ripoff. Crickets die off fast, they stink to high heavens, they crawl out and escape, they jump, they make a lot of noise, just way too many drawbacks. Okay, um... My brother-in-law had ordered from Backwater Reptiles. They mysteriously, the exotic pets, the arachnids he ordered, mysteriously died. They were living in the best of conditions. Okay, all of his pets are in the best of condition. Okay, the environment is perfect. They mysteriously died within a few days of arrival, okay? He tells Backwater, Backwater gets nasty with him. They have an attitude uh, like they don't want to give him a refund. They don't want to give him store credit. They, they, don't, they didn't even apologize. Absolute scumbags. This seems to be very common in the exotic pet industry. Um, there's a pet store in my town called New Jersey Exotics. Okay, uh, the manager in charge, her name is Megan. And uh, I've given her so many things, gifts that I, you know, items that I didn't need. I had surplus. I had extra, so I gave it to her. Over the course of the years, I've given her things. She said thank you. She took them. But, you know, anytime I had something uh, alive uh, for that she could resell in the store, she won't give me store credit. She won't give me any money. Not one red cent. Not one red cent no, of store credit or, or trade-in, or nothing. She wanted it for free. Her excuse is that everyone gives her her animals for free. So therefore, she can't give me anything. But it's okay for me to give her other things that she can use as gifts. She's a millennial. She's young. And just like millennials, they, they feel entitled. Uh, they know it all. They have all the answers. Uh, they show no remorse uh, in their selfishness. Uh, almost like a form of a, a sociopathic personality. Very self-centered. And um, 
but it's typical retail. Uh, retail stores, usually you cannot bring anything to them um, and expect money or store credit. They, they will not respect you as a return customer. I don't care if you've been a customer of theirs for 20 years. They, they want everything for free. So this includes all retail stores uh, in the pet industry. They all are scumbags. All retail is sleazy and underhanded. Uh, and, uh, oh, by the way, reptile shows in my state of New Jersey, I can't speak for other states, but reptile shows have the nerve to ask for a cover charge over seven dollars to get in now you're you're going to a reptile show uh, with the intent of looking around and possibly purchasing something so you're a potential customer why should a potential customer have to wait on a long line and pay a cover charge just to walk into the building if you are a potential customer that might be spending money there don't their excuse was what Megan told me was hey well they have to pay for the lease of the building they have to pay for the leasing yeah but don't they receive rent money from the vendors from the breeders that set up tables at a reptile show don't they make a profit from don't they pay for that leasing and many times over from all the rent that they collect from vendors? Hey, I didn't just fall off the turnip truck. I'm a very slick, street smart person. I know they collect money from the vendors. So that leasing is paid for with lots of money left over. Okay. So the whole concept of a cover charge is just sim simply greed, arrogance, and being a downright fucking crook, okay? So I have to disagree with New Jersey Exotics and Megan about the reptile show. This reptile show in particular, I believe was in Teaneck, New Jersey. I went there. I saw the long line, I learned about the cover charge, and I turned around and I left the premises. I did not uh, go inside at a principal. At a principal. I'm a potential customer. The vendors are paying rent. The breeders, the vendors are paying rent. So don't tell me that you need 7 or $8 from the public to pay the leasing on the building. A fucking crook. Okay. Um, but how much is really honest in the state of New Jersey anyway? You know, I'm from here and I know I know there's a sleaze bag on every street corner. A lying sleaze bag. And if you're in business, of course, never trust what a CEO tells you. Okay, you can't even trust what the government tells you. So, getting back to the beginning of the show, which uh, is a reflection of the photo that you're looking at. You see the baby Cuban red scorpion that was sold by Swift Invertebrates. And then you see it next to a coin. Uh, a penny, I believe, and you and you see just how tiny it is, thirty-five dollars for that. Are you kidding me? Thirty-five dollars for that? Plus he wanted forty dollars FedEx overnight shipping for a tiny little ant-like baby scorpion like that with a high mortality rate. You're a scumbag. You're a crook. I don't trust 
and rightfully so. I don't trust anyone in retail. The pet industry is a ripoff, just like fine jewelry, just like infomercials, just like car dealers. Okay, and um, I mentioned some people, some individuals, I name names, that all have been inducted into the Progressive Discussions Chiseler's Hall of Shame, and rightfully so. Okay, um, you know, at a goodwill, if you're a steady customer and you're bringing something of value that your store is going to make a profit, a decent profit off of, at a goodwill towards a steady customer that has been giving you things, at least give the person store credit. Don't make up an excuse that you can't give any money and you and you want you you you're willing to accept it but for free. You know, that's like spitting in the face of a customer who's been going to your establishment for a long time. Uh, the same thing happened with my brother in law and Swift Invertebrates. He's made so many purchases from them, spending that damn f overnight $40 FedEx shipping, okay, paying all kinds of money, ordering many, many uh, tarantula slings, scorpions, whatever, what have you, okay. The guy showed no respect for that fact that he's been a long-time steady customer. No store credit, no apology, no refund, nothing. Okay, total contempt for his customers. And my brother-in-law spent a lot of money dealing with uh, Swift Invertebrates. And, uh, and from what I understand, there are many people that are very angry at backwater reptiles. Um... You, you have to, if you're in business, you have to do the right thing. That's all. But getting back to people like Ken the Bug Guy and uh, uh, Swift Invertebrates, even if it's a baby, a hatchling lizard, you do not sell any newborn creature to the public because you. The mortality rate is high. You do not know uh, g genetically how strong that baby is going to be, if it's going to survive. You have to get it to start eating and put on size before you sell it. So, and, and please do your research. Do not go to forums. There are a bunch of kids there, a bunch of punks that think they know it all. They don't know shit. I've caught them in many lies. Do sufficient research from reputable websites, from people who know, like herpetologists, and listen to the experts. Okay. Um, I'll give you an example. Instead of spending a lot of money on a flimsy plastic critter keeper, you can go to Walmart and buy a Sterilite storage container and burn holes in it. And they make perfect, very, very cheap critter keeper, critter keepers. Okay. Um, and just make sure that even with creatures that need humidity, make sure that the humidity is not too high. You should not see condensation on the side of the uh, enclosure because what will happen is uh, fungus will grow, bacteria will grow, and then you'll end up with fungus gnats and bad things will happen, all right? Uh, before I forget, um, can the bug guy 
uh, kept on telling me after I asked him what is the ideal and uh, proper environment for the um, the vinegaroon. Um, he he told me to use the a coconut fiber substrate and keep it very very moist, very damp until it appears like used coffee grains and maintain it that way. Well, guess what? The vinegaroons died. The giant vinegaroons, uh, which were not full grown, they were juveniles, they died um, from the excess humidity because Ken the Bug Guy insisted to keep their enclosure very humid. Oh, they need humidity. I'm thinking to myself, how could they need so much humidity if they come from the American Southwest, if they live in deserts? Uh, even the ones in Florida uh, burrow near dry sand. Okay. So, I don't know if he, he said that so it dies on me and I have to keep on ordering more from him. Um, because I also received the same misinformation from the owner of Air Plant City because I, I am also a Talancia enthusiast. And uh, every time the woman that owns Air Plant City would give me advice, the air plants would perish. So you got to be careful when it comes to advice from uh, people that are in the business of selling anything alive uh, through a retail business. Um, anyway, that wraps it up for this uh, Mega Life 21 hard hitting podcast. Uh, we'll see you next time on the next topic.